where she came from Kinda turned me upside down I just don't know what to do have a book haul for you and I'm really really excited because I saw these on eBay on a whim and they were a really really good price so I jumped on them and I'm so excited to have them in my collection so I went on eBay the other night and I typed in Debbie Maycomer books and I often save like items into my cart and just watch them until I have the money to purchase them or whatnot and these ones were auction they weren't buy now because most of the stuff I look at are buy now but these were actually auction so I watched them and I won both of them so I'm really happy with that um, I got 16 books all up and all up I paid $40 and that's including shipping. Shipping was the most expensive part of this because Australia postage is ridiculously priced but it is what it is. Um, so I am going to run through all of the books that I got. I'm going to read the synopsis on the back as well because I honestly know nothing about any of these books so I will show you that as well. And I'm just like so excited. They're obviously used books so some of them are in better condition than others but they're all in pretty pretty good condition so I really don't mind um, that the fact that they have been obviously read. Um, I'm like messaging my friend about these books right now um, because she knows I'm a book hoarder. <laughs> She was saying that like Debbie May Comer has written so many books and she has like I'm 31 and um, Debbie May Comer has been writing books before I was born so yes so anyway let's kind of just jump uh, into it so the first book I have is the Heart of Texas series this is a volume one uh, so this has book one and two in it and I love 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 the cover on this I think the cover is beautiful I am definitely a cover buyer um, and I just think this is gorgeous and this is definitely one of the books that I've been eyeing off as you can see they've been read so there is like creasing and everything on the spines and stuff but I really don't mind so in this uh, book there is book one which is Lonesome Cowboy and book two which is uh, Texas Two Step and these were actually published not this edition but the stories themselves so this edition was published in 2013 like the bind up but the first actually no the book one and book two were originally published in 1998 so they are a lot older um, these books so I'll read what it says on the back it says welcome to the town of promise deep in the heart of Texas promise a ranching community in Hill County is a place with a mysterious past and more than its share of secrets it's also a place where family and friendship matter and then book one says Savannah Weston lives quietly on family ranch with her brother Grady until she encounters a stranger named Lorendo Smith a disenchanted cowboy who just might change her life in the best way possible and then book two says after her father's death Ellie Frazier takes over the feed store in promise still in mourning she relies on her friends for comfort but now her long-standing relationship with one of those friends rancher Glenn Patterson seems to be turning into something else so this is definitely definitely a cute romance series and this was published by Harlequin Mirror so it is um, um, Mirror and Harlequin I believe are the same same company and then I also got volume 2 of The Heart of Texas and again the cover on this is everything I love it so beautiful and this one has um, two books in it as well the third book which is Caroline's Child and the fourth book which is Dr. Texas and 
This one was published in 1998 as well. They were both published. And then this edition was published in 2013 by Harlequin Mirror as well. And then I'll read the um, synopsis for the two books. So for the third book, it says, Who's the father of Caroline's child? Everyone in town wants to know, but no one's ever asked or ever will. The people of Promise are protective of Caroline Daniels and five-year-old Maggie. They care, especially rancher Grady Weston, who's beginning to realise he more than cares. And then the fourth book says, They call her Dr. Texas. She's Jane Dickinson, a newly graduated physician for California, from California, who's working at the Promise Clinic, but just for a couple of years. They call him Mr. Grouch. Cal Patterson was left at the altar by his out-of-state fiance, and he's not over it yet. Too bad Jane reminds him so much of the woman he's trying to forget. So I just feel like these would be really, really cute, and I love these additions so they are gonna look so good on my shelf and i am definitely going to have to um reorganize my shelves and you can definitely tell these have been well loved as you can tell from the spine creasing but i honestly don't mind i do like to save books where i can so the next book I have is actually a bind up of three uh, different books and there is three different authors in this bind up and Debbie May Coma is one of them. Um, this is The Knitting Diaries and the authors are Debbie May Coma, Susan Mallory and Christina Skye and this is what it looks like. It was obviously originally from Target. I'm going to have to try and get the stickers off. But it's a cute, cute book um, cover. And I thought I definitely would like this one because it's about knitting. Um, so let's have a look. This one was published by Mira. And it was published in, let's see. The Bind Up Edition was published in 2011, and it looks like each one of the stories were also published in 2011. So we have the first one, which is written by Debbie May Comer, which is um, The 21st Wish. And it says, Anne Marie Roche and her adopted daughter, 10-year-old Ellen, have each written a list of 20 wishes, on which they include learning to knit. Like many other of their wishes, it's come true and now they knit practically every day. But Ellen has quietly added a 21st wish that her mum will fall in love with Tim, Ellen's birth father, who's recently entered their lives. How cute does that sound? And then the second story is called Coming Unraveled, which is by Susan Mallory. And this one says, when Robin Mulligan's dreams of becoming a Broadway star give way to an intense longing for her childhood home, she decides it's time to make a fresh start back in Texas, running her grandmother's knitting store. But the handsome, hot-tempered TJ Parsman isn't making it easy on her. If he can learn to trust Robin and overcome his tragic past, they just might discover a passion like no other. Um, that sounds cute. And I love how a lot of these books are set in Texas. Like, pretty much all of these books, actually, no, all of these books are set in America, which I love, because I love reading about different places that are outside of my own country. Um, and then the third book is called Return to Summer Island by Christina Skye. And this one says, after a devastating car accident, Caro, Caro McNeil finds healing on Oregon's deeply summer island. Sorry, I don't know why I said deeply. Sleepy <laughs> summer island where she is warmly embraced by a community of knitters. She also finds meaning and purpose in the letters she exchanges with a Marine serving in Afghanistan. But when life takes another unexpected turn, will Karu untangle her fears and pick up the threads of hope, opening her heart to wherever it takes her? That seems like such a sweet one. I've actually never, believe it or not, read a romance story where the love interest is a soldier or a marine or what have you. So that will be um, a really interesting read. And it does say on the back that this includes knitting patterns. So somewhere in this book, there is knitting patterns. I don't know where they are. I'll have to look. But yeah, so that's that one. 
The next book I got is another bind up of three authors. So Debbie May Comer, Susan Wiggs and Jill Barnett. It's called That Summer Place, um, the book. And the three stories are called Old Things, which is Jill Barnett, uh, Private Paradise by Debbie May Comer and Island Time by Susan Wiggs. And this was published by Mira. And it was published in... This bind-up edition was published in 2015, but the original stories were published in 1998. That's cute. So, let's see. The first story, Old Things by Jill Barnett, uh, says Catherine, divorced for almost a decade, returns to the lodge where she'd spent summers while she was growing up. Now, all these years later, she encounters Michael, the love of her teenage life, and falls for him all over again. So that sounds like a really cute second chance romance. Um, the second book, um, story, which is Private Paradise by Debbie Maycomber, says the next month, Beth shows up with her teenage son, Paul. It's their first vacation since she was widowed. She ends up sharing the place with an attractive stranger, John Livingston, and his difficult 12-year-old, Nikki. Soon, Paul and Nikki have plans for their parents. Cute! And then, the last one, which is Island Time by Susan Wiggs, says... Then in August, architect Mitch Rutherford comes to the island where he's joined by Rosie Galvez, who's been hired to provide an environmental report. Mitch is a workaholic on the deadline while Rosie's attitude is relaxed, but they fall in love despite or because of their differences. How cute. I have so many stories to choose from, you guys. <laughs> The next one I have is called Ready for Love, and this one is another bind up. I really love this watercolor cover. I think it's a beautiful cover. This is also published by Mira as well, and it was originally published in, let's see now. The first book was published in 1993, the fourth, um, the second book was published in 1994, and then this edition of the book the bind up was published in 2006. So the first story is called Ready for Romance and it says at the age of 14 Jessica Kellerman was wildly infatuated with Evan Dryden but that was just a teenage crush. Now almost 10 years later she's in love, truly in love with his older brother Damien but everyone including Damien believes she's carrying a torch for Evan. Interesting. And then the second book, Ready for Marriage, says Mary Jo Summerhill is a woman in love with Evan, but her background's blue collar, while Evan's is blue blood, so three years ago she got out of his life and broke his heart. Now she needs his help. More than that, she wants his love. She wants a second chance with Evan. The Dryden men and bachelors no longer, not if these women have anything to say about it. Cute! I love this! Actually, this sounds like it's going to be a really adorable book. So there's that one. Um, the next one is called Orchard Valley Brides. Um, and this one also has two stories in it. And again, I love the cover on this. This is also set in Texas. There's quite a few of Debbie May Kramer books that are set in Texas. Um, this was published by Mira as well. And the bind up edition was published in 2010, but the original stories, the first one was published in 92 and the second was published in 93. So the first book, Nora, is, says here, Nora Bloomfield is feeling a bit unneeded these days. Her father is recovering from his heart attack and her sisters Valerie and Stephanie are busy planning their weddings, but their cantankerous Texan named Rowdy Cassidy crashes his small plane in Orchard Valley. The same Rowdy Cassidy who be, who'd been Valerie's boss and who demanded Valerie marry him. Now he's Noah's patient and in all her nursing experience she's never encountered a more difficult man or a more irresistible one, except is he still in love with her sister? Interesting. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting little love triangle-ish if you could call it that. Um, and then the second book um, says, when Nora's friend Sherry Waterman leaves Orchard Valley, Oregon for Pepper, Texas, she's 
definitely not in the mood for Lone Star loving, but if anyone can change her mind, it's Cody Bauman, a hard-working, good-looking rancher. Not only that, Cody has a 12-year-old daughter who thinks Sherry's just perfect for her dad. Cute! Love it. And I think the reason why I love Debbie Maycomb's books so much is just because they remind me of Hallmark movies. They're just so cozy and fun, and they're not supposed to be like a crazy in-depth read, which is what I really enjoy. The next one is called Miss Miracle, and I'm excited for this one. Um, this is a book, excuse the truck going by. This is a book that I have wanted to read for a while, and the cover is just beautiful. Love it. And this is one of the better conditioned books. It looks like it's only ever been read once. Um, most of these others, you can tell they've been read and reread and reread. <laughs> um, this one has been read, yeah, about once by the looks of it. It was published in 1996, which is cool. And then I think this particular edition was published in 2005. Um, but yeah, it's so nice this book and this one's done by Avon Publishing uh, and the back of this one says with Christmas approaching and wild twin boys to raise alone Seth Webster needs a miracle his home is in chaos the latest in a long line of exasperated housekeepers quitting in disgust and he needs help keeping his family together and then it arrives on his doorstep her name is Miss Merkel but the kids call her Miss Miracle, and from the moment the warm, knowing, and very patient nanny appears, everything is different. Her sassy spirit is infectious, and it gives Seth the courage to approach Reba, a beautiful travel agent, who's been hurt and betrayed and is afraid to ever love again. Through the magic of faith, and with a little help from a children's Christmas pageant, and a lot of encouragement from Miss Miracle, Seth and Reba might just be able to find a Christmas miracle of their very own true love. Oh, how cute is that? I love those types of Christmas books. So cute. So there's that one. The next one I have here is called Married in Seattle. And this is another bind up of two books. And this is what it looks like. I love these watercolored covers. They are so cute. Um, this one was published by Mira as well. It was originally published in, let's see here, the first book was published in 91, the second in 95, and this edition was published in 2009. So, it says here, uh, the first book, which is called, uh, First Comes Marriage, says here, Janine my grandfather Hartman arranged a husband for me, Zach Thomas. The intended groom was just as outraged as I was, but Franks insisted we'd be a perfect match. First comes marriage according to him. <laughs> so an arranged marriage. And then the second one is called Wanted Perfect Partner, which I actually do already own, but that's okay. I own it in this edition, in this bind up. And basically it's about a, let me just put back so the second book is about a single mum and her daughter decides to place a ad in like a dating paper or whatever to find her mum the perfect partner and the, um steve the guy um i think it's his sister places or responds to the ad in the paper and they both get set up by the sister and the daughter and I think it's just super cute so there's that one um, moving on to the next one this is probably the worst condition book which it's not really that bad there's just a tiny tear right there but that's not that bad and some creasing um, this one is called together again and this is a bind up of two stories it's published by Mira as well um, this one was originally published, okay, this edition was published in 2015, but the original stories, the first one was published in 1985, and then the second one was published in 1986, both before I was born. <laughs> um, but the first book is called The Trouble with Cassie. 
and it says he's leaving her or is he? Cassie Crane. Yeah, Cassie Crane, CEO of a West Coast hotel chain, has always taken her job seriously and taken her most important employee for granted. But when Blake Sherrill, her very skillful and very attractive general manager, resigns, Cassie suddenly realises she not only needs him, she loves him. So now the question is, how can she convince Blake to stay in Portland on the job and most important with her? That sounds so cute. And then the second book is called Reflections of Yesterday. And it says, she left him, but now she's back. They were in love at 17, but Simon Canfield's wealthy parents paid Angie Robinson and her father to leave town. So Angie was forced to abandon the boy she loved. Now, 12 years later, Angie's got a fiancé and a successful business of her own, a flower shop. She returns home to Grows Point, South Carolina to repay the money and reclaim her family pride and discover that her feelings for Simon haven't changed more than that neither have his Ooh, that's going to be interesting but these sound super cute so excited for that okay the next book i have is family men this is volume two of the midnight sun series i already own volume one and i've read both of them and i love them um so this one has two stories it has book three and book four in it and this is a different edition to the other edition that I own but it is what it is like the cover doesn't match the other ones but that's fine uh, but this one is um, published by hmm, who is this published by let me see Harlequin Yeah, so this one's published by Harlequin. And then this particular edition was published in 2000, but the original stories, the uh, third book and the fourth book, were published in 95 and 96. Cute. Okay, so book three says, Daddy's little helper, widower Mitch Harris, figures the new teacher won't last until the first snowfall, but his seven-year-old daughter Chrissy has long-term plans for Bethany Ross. Chrissy's dad needs a wife, she needs a mum, and Bethany seems like the perfect candidate for both jobs. And then book four is called Because of the Baby, and it says, Matt Caldwell's latest scheme is to renovate the O'Halloran's old lodge. He also plans to win back his ex-wife. But Karen Caldwell is furious with him, though. She did react to him as his sister's wedding in an unexpected way, and now there's a baby coming. So basically, this series is about the O'Halloran men. They live in a small town quite out in the wilderness in Alaska, and they decide that they need to bring women into the town because there's not enough women in the town. And then people start falling in love, <laughs> basically. So there's that one. I have volume three of Midnight Sums for that series. So this will be book five and book six. And oh, it looks like it includes the novella for this as well called Mid Midnight Sons and Daughters. That's cute. So this one is published by Mira. It was this particular edition was published in 2017, but the books themselves were published in 1996 and then the novella was published in 2000. So the fifth book is called Falling for Him. And it says, Christian, the youngest O'Halloran brother, has a problem, and her name is Mariah Douglas. The Midnight Sun's secretary is always losing him, his messages, misplacing his files, and generally creating chaos. Despite that, he can't get her out of his mind. Cute. I really enjoyed the first two books in this series, and I'm so glad to have the rest so that I can continue on. Okay, so the sixth book is called Ending in Marriage. The clashes between pilot Duke Porter and Seattle attorney Tracy Santiago are legendary. Duke's a tough, rugged individualist who delights in expressing outrageous opinions, particularly when Tracy's around. But she gives as good as she gets, and not just when they're arguing. Cute. And then the novella says Scott O'Halloran and Chrissy Harris are all grown up now. After years away from Alaska, Scott's back in town and everybody's wondering if he's here to stay especially Chrissy the girl he left behind adorable I really can't wait to actually pick these books up 
I've got a few left still, so hold on with me there, guys. Um, so this one is Dakota Born. It's the first book in the Dakota trilogies, and there is a short story by the looks of it. And this has such a pretty cover. I love these. This one is published by Mira as well. Uh, this one, let's see doesn't say when this particular edition was published but the first book was published in 2000 and then the second was published in oh okay so let's see here so the book itself was published in 2000 and then the extra little short story was published in 2007 so it says on the back here let's see Okay, like many small towns, Buffalo Valley is dying. Stores are boarded up, sidewalks are cracked, houses are in need of a coat of paint. But despite all that, there's a spirit of hope here of defiance. The people still left here are fighting for their town. Lindsay Snyder is a newcomer. She's an outsider, even though she spent childhood vacations here. Now she returns to see the family house again, to explore family secrets, and to reevaluate her life and soon after she arrives she meets a local farmer named Gabe Sinclair. Lindsay decides to stay in North Dakota. Her decision marks a new beginning for Buffalo Valley and for her because in this broken little town she discovers the love and purpose she's been seeking. Oh my god this is so cute and it kind of reminds me of that TV show Hometown. I love Hometown and I love Aaron and Ben and they're revamping their beautiful little town laurel um so this kind of reminds me of that so so excited for that the next book i have is the second book in the dakota trilogy and this one's called dakota home and this one's a different edition the, the cover is different but i love the cover on this one it is watercolor look at how beautiful that is so beautiful and this one's published by Mira. It was published in 2000. And this one says, Buffalo Valley has found new life. People have started moving to this town. People like Lindsay Snyder, who came as a teacher and stayed marrying local farmer Gage Sinclair. And now Lindsay's best friend, Maddie Washburn, has decided to pull up stakes and join her in Buffalo Valley, hoping for the same kind of satisfaction and the same kind of love. Jeb McKenna is a rancher, a solitary man who's learned to endure Maddie. Learn to endure. Maddie, unafraid and open hearted, is drawn to Jeb, but he rejects her overtures until one of the North Dakota's deadly storms throws them together. Those few days and nights bring unexpected consequences for Maddie and Jeb, consequences that one way or another affect everyone in Buffalo Valley. Oh my god, so cute. Can't wait for that. The next one I have, we've got three books left, guys, um, is Be My Valentine. This is what it looks like. It's kind of, yeah, I'd say it's like a watercolor sort of um, cover. This one was published by Mira as well. It's actually a bind up of two stories. This one was published in, let's see, this edition was published in 2000. But the first story was published in 91 and the second was published in 92. So the first story is called My, Fa My Funny Valentine. And it says, Diane Williams needs a man, but only for a night. The night of the community centre Valentine dinner to be precise. Exasperated by her children's relentless efforts to get her a date, Diane finds herself approaching a handsome stranger named Steve and making him an outrageous offer. An offer he doesn't refuse. An offer that might lead to more than just one night. Oh, cute. Sorry about that, guys. My camera cut off. Let me start that again. It says, um, the second book in this is called My Hero. And it says, Bailey York needs a man, but only on paper. She's writing a romance novel and she's having difficulty creating a hero. So she needs a real life model for her story. Parker Davidson is perfect. Everything a hero should be. But he wants to become hero in her life not just her book and not just on valentine's day either adorable this would have been so perfect to read for valentine's day but we are past that so but that's so cute okay the next one i've got is a row the inn at rose harbor and this one oh 
this one's a Hallmark um, uh, series called Cedar Cove. Cute. I wish we got Hallmark in Australia. Seriously, Hallmark. Hook a girl up with the movies. Like, I want to watch your stuff. I don't know why it's so hard to get here. Um, this one's published by Ballantine Books. It's published in... Where is it? 2012, I believe. Oh no, 2013. Okay, 2013. Uh, so this is just one one book, The Inn at Rose Harbour. So it says, Jo Marie Rose first arrives in Cedar Cove seeking a fresh start, a young widow coping with the, the death of her husband. She purchases a local bed and breakfast, the newly christened Rose Harbour Inn, ready to begin her life anew. Her first guest is Joshua Weaver, who has come home to care for his ailing stepfather. The two have never seen eye to eye, and Joshua has little hope that they can reconcile the differences. Jo Marie's other guest is Abby Kincaid, who has returned to Cedar Cove to attend her brother's wedding. Back for the first time in 20 years, she almost wishes she hadn't come. The picturesque town are harboring painful memories, and as Abby and Joshua try to heal from their past and Jo Marie dreams of the possibilities before her, they all realise that life moves in only one direction forward. This seems adorable, you guys. And it says that there's a bonus story on the back in small print. It says, first time in print, the bonus story went first they met. Adorable. I... I'm so looking forward to reading this. And then the very last book is a bind up of two authors. So Debbie Maycomer and then Sheila Roberts. Um, this was published by Mira. This is what it looks like. And it was published in... Let's see. So this edition was published in 2016. The story by Debbie Maycomer was published in 91. And then the story by Sheila... Is it Sheila? Yeah, Sheila Roberts was published in 2012. So there you go. So the first one, which is by Debbie Maycomer, is called First Comes Marriage. It says, Janine Hartman loves her grandfather, but balks at his plan to choose her husband, Zach Thomas. The intended groom has recently merged his business with the Hartman family firm, and that's the only Hartman-Thomas merger he wants. But, grandfather has other ideas, ideas belonging to a different place, a different time, it would be a perfect match. He insists Zach and Janine don't agree, in fact they agree, but only one thing. The Gramps is a stubborn meddling old man, but what if he's right? It sounds like one of the other books in here. Is it? Is it? Is it? Um, I don't know. I feel like this seems like another one I was just reading. Um, this one maybe? I think it is. I think it's the same as. Let's see. It is. Same as the, the first two books. Oh, the first two books are the same in these, but that doesn't bother me. Okay. Okay. So the second one by Sheila Roberts is called Sweet Dreams on Centre Street. Uh, previously published as Better Than Chocolate. Okay, so it says Sweet Dreams Chocolate Company has been in the Sterling family for generations, but now it looks as if they're about to lose it to the bank. That would be a disaster for the family and for the town of Icicle Falls, Washington. Can Samantha, the eldest daughter and new head of the company, come up with a way to save it? Unfortunately, the fate of Sweet Dreams is in the hands of her arch enemy, Blake Preston, the bank manager with the football hero Good Looks. It's enough to drive her to chocolate, but Blake's also enough to convince her that, believe it or not, there's something even better than chocolate. Uh, 
adorable. So that's all the books, you guys. Like, 16 physical books, but there are so many more actual, like, books to read, seeing most of these have two to three stories in each of them. So I'm excited to get those into my bookshelves and get them all organized. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited to have these in my collection. I love Debbie Make Them as work. And I'm really interested to read other authors that are similar to Debbie May Coma. So yeah. So anyway guys, I know that was a long book haul because I did read the backs of all of them. But I honestly didn't know anything about any of these except for the Midnight Suns ones. So I really wanted to tell you guys because a lot of people um, that read these days tend to not read romance. Um, which is fine. And I never used to read romance, but now I'm really getting into it and I love it. So maybe you didn't know about these books like myself. I knew about them. Like I've seen the titles and the covers and things, but I've never actually uh, took the time to see what they were about. So hopefully this shows you some books that maybe you might be interested in. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> I want to spend the night at hers And bring her one of my t-shirts So it smells like her perfume